All right, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our annual undergraduate honors and awards ceremony today. We are very excited to be joined by our students, their families, friends, and guests. My name is Miguel Huerta. I am the student support coordinator here in the program in public health. I think I speak for everyone here when I say we are very excited to celebrate all these amazing accomplishments together. I would like to take the time right now to thank, thank the team who put a lot of time into coordinating this event, our undergraduate students affairs team. If you all would please come up and introduce yourselves. Hello everyone, congratulations. My name is Jackie Osegueda and I am one of the academic advisors. Hello, hello, good morning. My name is Arturo and I'm also one of the academic advisors. Hello, good morning. I'm Rocio Gonzalez, the community engagement coordinator. Good morning, everyone. My name is Madeleine Dumaup and I'm one of the undergraduate academic advisors. Welcome, everybody. for those wonderful introductions. I would also like to acknowledge two of our team members who couldn't be here today. Uh, Jacqueline Baruga, our direc Director of Student Affairs, who just had her baby a few days ago. And Denise Leon, another one of our senior academic advisors. If you can now please help me welcome our Director and Founding Dean, Dr. Bernadette Bowden Albala, for our official welcoming and opening remarks to our ceremony. Good morning, everyone, and congratulations to all of our undergraduate honors and awards recipients. I welcome each of you and your family to this ceremony. My name, as you've heard, is Bernadette Bodenell Valor, and I'm the director and founding dean of the UCI Irvine Program in Public Health. And I don't know if you've heard the good news, but we've just made it through our divisional assembly and uh, are moving up, transitioning to a school we're waiting for probably, I think, February and, um, the fall for the um, Office of the President to sign us off as an official school. And we have made huge progress and so really, really excited about all the efforts that you've helped us with in moving through this transition. So it's a wonderful day for each of you and your families and I'm really honored to address you on this special occasion. We celebrate today your tremendous academic accomplishments and your resiliency in the face of unprecedented times. I commend you for your hard work and your dedication, and that has all contributed to your ability to thrive. Not only did you finish your degree during a global pandemic, but also amid a nationwide social justice movement for racial and gender equity. And really what a privilege it's been for me to witness the class of 2022 and members of the campus community as you've come together in many inspiring ways to address the many public, public health challenges that we faced this year. Thank you for harnessing your energy, your skills, and your lessons learned from your time at UCI to have a positive impact on the lives of the UCI community and others while working diligently to get to graduation day. Indeed, your commitment to public health is now more important than ever. And I want to thank each and every one of you for choosing this field. And as you start another journey, perhaps your journey is going to take you to graduate school. Maybe you'll choose to work on a master's in public health, maybe here. Um, or maybe you'll pursue a doctorate. Or perhaps you'll close the chapter of education and take the tools and skills and knowledge that you've obtained during your time here to work in the community, in government, in a healthcare agency, in a non-government organization. No matter what you decide, remember, that you have earned a degree in public health. You are the next generation of public health practitioners, leaders, and advocates that will solve problems that generations before were unable to. If you think about and work towards integrating public health's mission 
of, of towards health and well-being, along with being able to translate the science of public health into practice, you will lead us with compassion and you will make a difference in the lives of those around you. And further, the future will be one that is more sustainable, equitable, and just. So we all know, we've all been through years now of COVID and, and many other things. The world is complex and the road ahead is gonna be filled with challenges, but you are prepared. But just know that for every achievement, there could be a fall and that's okay. Embrace those mistakes because they are what helps you learn and move things forward. I cherish the opportunity to have gotten to know a number of you. Remember that we are always here, even though we're departing, you're departing as um, undergraduates, that we're here for you. We're here to support you. We're here to, to enhance your careers. We're always here. Just reach out to us, call us, email us, visit us, and know that you really are the brightest of the bright and that we will always take pride in your achievements, both now and in the future. And so I say congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you. Thank you, Dean Bowden Albala, for those remarks. To start off our recognitions, it is our honor to present the undergraduate program honors to the awardees. These students were nominated by public health faculty and staff and carefully selected based upon their personal and academic achievements. Undergraduate students that receive program honors are recognized with a blue cord to be worn at commencement. For the first award, please welcome V. Lay to the stage to present the Outstanding Contribution to Public Health, Community, and UCI Service Award. Good morning, everybody. Um, we are honored to present Outstanding Contribution to Public Health, Community, and UCI Service to Serena Yang Long. Serena, please join us on stage. <laughs> Serena has been interning with our Office of Community Outreach and Engagement, COE, at the Chow Family Comprehensive Cancer Center since the fall quarter of 2021. She's been helping our COE office expand its capacity to serve the community by assisting with various community-based participatory research projects and community outreach events. She also played a huge part in the COVID-19 API photo project, photo voice project, where she captured the impact of the pandemic on the AAPI community and disseminated the data slash findings to our community partners. She also has been helping various faculty members in public health and Asian American studies department with research. Serena is warm, compassionate, and incredibly driven to serve the community. Our team at COE truly believes she deserves this nomination for all her service and hard work. Can we give Serena a round of applause? All right, for our next award, I am honored to present the award for Outstanding Contribution to the Program in Public Health to Kimberly Lopez Alvarez. I believe they are not here today, so I want to say congrats to them for getting this award, and hopefully we will see them very soon. I'm going to go ahead and move on to our next speaker. I'm going to welcome Dr. John Wu to present the Excellent in Public Health Research Award. Um, I'm very thrilled uh, to present the Excellence in Public Health Research Award to Erica Chenoy. Erica, please join us on stage. Erica conducted uh, her honors thesis research project focusing on knowledge and perception of wildfire risk among the residents in Orange County. 
and with the ultimate goal of promoting sustainability and combating climate change related public health issues. Erica uh, has demonstrated great initiative, diligence and creativity uh, for designing and carrying out a very thoughtful survey study. Because of her excellence in all of these areas, she received over 800 survey responses, which is far exceeding our original goal of 200. So um, she translated the English version of the survey to Spanish, and uh, she also ensured that each city of Orange County has a good representation in the survey responses. Um, the rich data set she collected build a very strong foundation for a solid scientific publication in the near future. And in addition to data collection, Erica also learned data analysis. I know this is a, like a daunting task for a lot of undergraduate students, but Erica uh, learned very quickly data analysis skills, including subgroup analysis, statistical significance analysis, et cetera. And her results showed some very interesting patterns of how certain factors, such as disease status, prior wildfire experience, affect people's perception of wildfire risk, and many other patterns we are going to excited to write into a paper. She plans to draft and submit a peer-reviewed manuscript in early summer this year. Um, overall, Eric, uh, Erica is an excellent example of an undergraduate researcher who has great passion, creativity, and diligence. So, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. John Wu. Now please help me welcome Dr. David Timberlake to the stage who will present our next award for excellence in writing. Hello everyone, it's a real pleasure to be here this morning. Um, and it's an honor and pleasure to award Jasmine Tan Kerr um, excellence in writing. So Jasmine, if you can come to the podium, please. All right. Congratulations, Jasmine. <laughs> Let me say a few words. It was a great, I just had so much fun working with Jasmine and the team. Um, this was a couple years ago with her, on her public health honors thesis. And originally Jasmine had contacted me as part of the program. And she said, oh yeah, you do tobacco control. I'm very interested in Juul. And at that time, Juul flavors were very popular. This was for vaping, as most of you know. And I said, Jasmine, that's a very important topic. It's one of the hottest topics addressing youth issues. Um, and I said, but there's so many papers coming out on this, and I'm not sure how we could sort of do something original. So I said, let's do something less sexy and um, do a policy analysis on a Senate bill. And uh, well, I don't, I don't know if she was completely receptive in the beginning, but it, she really embraced this project. And um, what it entailed was there was a um, bill that was passed by the California State Legislature, Senate Bill 793, and its predecessor, uh, Senate Bill 38, um, didn't get that far. But with 793, it bans the sales of all flavored tobacco products in California. And so, unfortunately, what happened was, is I don't want to make this too, the story too long here, but the tobacco industry um, got almost three quarter of a million um, signatures to place that as a referendum. And so we will all be voting in the 2022 midterm elections on Senate Bill 793 to uphold it. Okay, but let me get to Jasmine. So, <laughs> sorry, just had to give you a little background here. So Jasmine, um, as I mentioned, she really embraced this project and, and it was very exploratory at the time because we weren't sure where this was going. And um, so the project entailed evaluating 
public, the content of public hearings on the bill. So these would be individuals from the public who hear, you know, uh, come before Senate members, talk about why they think, um, you know, this would be disastrous for like the vape industry, for example, or a lot of public health officials who are emphasizing the importance of banning flavored tobacco because it's really a big initiator of tobacco use, um, particularly among youth. And so Jasmine um, really articulated her th thesis because this is what she's awarded here is the excellence in writing, um, articulated how this, there was this shift from mainly a youth focus, which is what everyone would think in terms of vaping. This is primarily what's, you know, the flavored vapes are just so um, prevalent. And so she, she analyzed and assessed how going from Senate Bill 38 to Senate Bill 793, there was shift to more of a, a broader focus on how flavored tobacco doesn't just affect youth, but it also affects adults. And so she brought that into the context of arguments that were addressing the COVID pandemic and how tobacco use um, is, is an extra risk factor for people infected with COVID, um, as well as addressing um, issues among the African-American community because of the um, uh, issues with regards to banning menthol, which is very popular in the African-American community. And it's very contentious because there's two, two sides of that argument. But really Jasmine had, um, you know, nicely sort of laid this out in her thesis. And so that's why I nominated her and congratulations. So for our next award, I am honored to present the award for excellence in undergraduate leadership. This award goes to Faraz Hardy, Alice Trong, and Trisha Sabarian. Please join us on stage. These students were nominated by Dr. Susanna Bick, um, and this is what she had to say about their accomplishments since she wasn't able to be here today. So Faraz Hardy was co-president of the Public Health Association for the year 2020 to 2021, and Alice and Trisha were both co-presidents of PHA for this past year, 2021 to 2022. Um, for Faraz, um, they were a, an, an administrative intern, two service chair, and co-president. They played an integral role in the, in the Public Health Association's annual summit. One of his most notable, notable leadership roles, including overseeing the execution of PHA's fifth annual summit, which was their very first virtual summit. This required a lot of adaptability and creativity, but Faraz continued to show great leadership throughout these changes. Alice was extremely dependable and proactive in advocating for student mental health. She brought in professionals within the mental health field to speak during meetings and implemented member check-ins in order to better engage with students and meet their needs throughout the year. Trisha also led the PHA family program. This program allowed members to build relationships with each other. Students were able to find a close-knit social community while also gaining knowledge through academically based events and meetings. Trisha was also able to manage a team of 17 board members and interns, success and interns and successfully led our largest public health summit to date. Congratulations. <laughs> now, please help me welcome Emily Drum to the stage to present our next award for excellence in public health practicum. For our next award, I am honored to present the Award for Excellence in Public Health Practicum. This award goes to John Michael Robb. Unfortunately, John was unable to make it today. However, here are some words regarding John. As a practicum student in the program in Public Health's Social Epidemiology and Research in Community Health Lab, known as the Search Lab, 
John Robb demonstrated a keen interest in community-engaged research, a willingness to take initiative and tackle challenges, and ability to be both a thoughtful leader and a collaborative team player, qualities that will serve him well in his future in public health. He made meaningful contributions to a variety of important search projects, including implementation of the community engagement plan for UCI's groundbreaking first exemption from informed consent study to treat stroke, adaptation of intervention materials focused on primordial prevention of hypertension among Santa Ana families for our upcoming serve OC study, pre-screening of electronic, electronic medical records for eligibility in stroke studies at UCI Health, development of social media posts and public health pop-up booths to raise awareness among UCI students, faculty, and staff, and quantitative analyses of our five-wave cross-sectional trend study to assess the relationship between household competition, co composition and COVID-19 pr uh, protective behaviors among UCI students. So while John's not here, we're thrilled uh, that he was able to win this award. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Now, please help me welcome Dr. Mariah Runnerstrom and Madeline to the stage, who will present our next award or awards um, for special recognition. All right, thank you, everyone. Um, so the first special recognition goes to Rashi Subramanya, who was an honor student who worked with me last academic year for her public health honors research project. Rashi couldn't be with us today, but I still want to say just a little bit about her important project. So she, Rashi is really interested in the impacts um, at the nexus of climate change and mental health. And so for her project, she conducted interviews with about 30 students on campus um, to get a sense for how students really felt about climate change, how it might be impacting their mental health. And she identified through her work three primary themes, including short-term versus long-term health impacts. Um, students also reported experiencing a loss of hope or eco-grief and worry about the future. This is such important work, and you know we, we've seen this through some quantitative work, but no one's really done a lot of survey research on it, so it was a very important um, contribution to the literature. And her work really underscores the importance of equitable, equitable approaches to climate change adaptation, including a focus on mental health, and especially among student populations, which are interestingly often understudied. So I just want to um, congratulate Rashi, so please join me in a round of applause for her. Thank you, Dr. Ranishtram. The next special recognition awards go to Anthony Chaires, Sonia Manju, and Isabel Devera. These students were nominated by Dr. Zuzana Bick. Please join us on the stage. So Dr. Bick could not attend today, but I will be sharing a few words from her. Anthony, Sonia, and Isabel have all played an important role in the success of the Public Health Association. Anthony played an integral role in the planning and execution of Public Health Association's annual Public Health Summit. And he was the sole event planner for the club's first ever virtual summit. Sonia had worked as media chair during the pandemic where she worked to engage with students virtually and continue helping establish solid communication in a time of uncertainty. She later became events chair and worked to help plan Public Health Association's second virtual summit as well. Isabel has been an incredibly strong self-starter who contributed greatly to Public Health Association's mission of promoting community and advocacy, such as through the implementation of a, of a donation drive to raise funds and helped coordinate a, a homelessness basic needs kit campaign with a local nonprofit. Through these efforts, you have all supported public health issues and helped to build community, community within the Public Health Association and the greater community. Congratulations.
All right, thank you. Now I'm going to go ahead and welcome Beth, England, and Mackie to the stage to introduce graduates receiving, receiving the Certificate in College Population Health Promotion and Wellness. Unfortunately, uh, Beth was not able to join us today, um, but we do want to honor our um, student wellness and health promotion students. Um, so I am going to introduce you all to the stage. We're delighted to have you. We want to congratulate you all on your hard work um, throughout this academic year and your participation in the program. Can we please ask Megan Rothenbach to the stage, Leslie Moo, Leslie Faris, Nathan Alteza, Cassidy Brown, Nicole Alberto, Karina Vargas Sufuentes, Cynthia Falk, Erica Shin Shinoy, Diana Carbajal, Andrew Alvarez. Caitlin Wen, Marissa Chen, Dana Afonso, Young Yung Ku. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for participating in this year's Students Wellness and Health Promotion uh, Certification. We'll give them a round, one more round of applause. Yes. Thank you, everyone. And now, Miguel Huerta. All right, thank you, Rocio, for that. Next up, if you can please help us welcome Dr. Ted Gideons, director of our undergraduate program to the stage to introduce our Delta Omega inductees. Hello again. Let me just, here I am. Okay, sorry. There's a script that is, uh, we've all seen many times, but not necessarily on paper. So the Delta Omega Society, uh, Honorary Society, is not something I knew existed until I ended up here um, uh, at UCI um, and I was inducted as a faculty member last year. Um, it was founded in 1924 at Johns Hopkins University within the School of Hygiene and Public Health to promote graduate study um, and recognize outstanding achievement in the field of public health. Whoops, sorry. Um, so about 100 years later, there are uh, 119 chapters um, and more than 23,000 members. Um, and we established the Delta Rho chapter in 2019. Uh, and the aim is to recognize academic merit and commit commitment to public health work. And um, you have to apply, you have to be an extraordinary student. And I am thrilled to honor to introduce our, uh, introduce our newest inductees. Um, and I, do they, are their names up there now? Okay, good, <laughs> so I can't see it. Um, and actually, I, despite the fact that I've had every single one of these as my students, I don't actually know how to pronounce all their names. So, um, Victoria uh, Mary Sinkegrani, hopefully those are all the letters in a row, um, Hannah Grace Pease, Erica Helen Moe, <laughs> Cynthia Falk, and Emily Gao. You come up and we will give you, oh, those are pretty. <laughs> of applause. <laughs> and we'll and just make all comes back. <laughs> all right, thank you, Dr. Gideons. 
Uh, if you can now please help us welcome Dr. Michael Hoyt onto the stage to introduce our students participating in undergraduate research. Hello, good morning. If nothing else uh, you've gained here, you hopefully have gained an appreciation for research, research in public health and the importance of that to our world. Uh, the Honors Research Program provides an opportunity for selected outstanding public health students to pursue advanced work in independent research and can earn honors in public health upon graduation. Admission to the program is based on a formal invitation at the end of the spring quarter of the junior year, and it's based on the students, on evidence of the students' ability interest in research, academic excellence, and their proposed thesis project with a faculty mentor. And the program ends with a presentation at our Europe conference and the honors culminating thesis. I had the pleasure of working with this year's cohort in the first quarter of their uh, process in forming and articulating and proposing their research projects, which was so fun and they made me so dang proud. I, I love this group of students. And some came into the process with a very clear and passionate view about what they wanted to study. Others found that they had many interests and needed to find a way to hone that down. And, and others certainly were plugged into bigger research projects and learned to find their, their part in, in a much bigger uh, uh, process. And you know, when I think back even to that first quarter, I think about those first days when you know, students were putting ideas out there and I'd question and say this, why don't you think about that? And why don't you think about this? And okay, okay, they'd say, you know, I, I'll do whatever you say. And then towards the end of that quarter, I'd say, hey, why don't you do this? And why don't you do that? And they'd say, no, professor, I'm doing this. And this is why I'm doing it. And I'd think, okay, they're ready. So I am very, very pleased to introduce uh, this year's honors uh, program cohort. Uh, the f I know some of you are here. Uh, the first one, Adanya Arias. <laughs> Faraz Fardi. <laughs> Cynthia Folk. Angela Liu. <laughs> Hannah Grace Peace. <laughs> and Hannah also won our Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Research in Public Health. John Michael Robb. Erica Shinoy. Sabella Tran. Chin Wang, and Anna Zhu. Great round of applause. Thank you to our honors research students for all of your incredible work. Now I would like to welcome back Beth back to the stage. Um, she just came, where's Beth? Oh, there you are. She would like to say a few words about our certificate students. And if any of the certificate students are still here, if you could please join Beth on stage. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Sorry. Um, I am heading out on holiday, and I was trying to get here just a little early, but you were early, and so <laughs> I missed being able to hand the certificate out to my beautiful students, but I wanted to say a couple of words. My name is Beth England Mackey. Um, I'm the assistant director at the Center for Student Wellness and Health Promotion, and the certificate program was a collaboration between the School of Public Health 
and the center. Um, and something that I'm very proud of, uh, I, in conjunction with Zuzana Bick, Dr. Zuzana Bick. And so today I just want to thank all of the students who made it today, because this is a, a, a lot going on right now. We've still had a big transition year, and yet they continue to just work hard and get the additional certificate to add to their diplomas and all their other awards, as we can see. Um, so I just want to say thank you. I've worked with some of these students in the office as interns, as office assistants. Some of them I didn't work with as closely, and we weren't allowed to meet, of course, because of COVID. So I'm very happy to see all these faces up here, and I just want to congratulate you on the certificate and wish you all the best as you journey out into the big world, and hopefully safely. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thanks once again, Beth. <laughs> All right, next, I'd like to welcome Dac Dr. Daniel Parker to recognize students who participated in the Global Health Research, Education, and Translation Program. Good morning, everyone. Let me take my mask off so you can hear me. So, so what we'd like to do right now is, is thank people, thank students, undergraduate students who are graduating for participating in the Global Health Research, Education, and Translation um, initiative that we have here on campus, or in our department, in our program, and really a, a, across campus. So, so really briefly, Global Health, what, what is Global Health, for those of you who haven't heard of this? In, in the last couple of hundred years, a lot of things have happened, um, including one thing is we've created nations all over, the, all over the world, and we've kind of chopped the world up into this map. We've drawn lines and said, oh, you were born here, this is where you're from. You were born here, this is where you're from. And there's lots of political implications of that. At the same time, we've had these amazing advances in, in public health and medicine. We're able to save lives like we've never been able to previously. But unfortunately, at the same time, if you were born in a certain place or if you don't have the right papers, oftentimes you don't have access to that. And so the basic premise behind global health is that you should have health regardless of where you were born or regardless of what papers you do and don't have. And that's really, that's really what the goal is here with, with GREAT, that's the Global Health Research, Education, and Translation, is to, to bring awareness to this. It's really obvious now with, that we're living in a pandemic that other people's health is our concern too, right? Um, so, so bring awareness of this, get students involved in research, um, to raise money for good, for good uh, initiatives and that sort of thing. And so, with that, what I would like to do is, um, is, is welcome a couple of students on stage. For those, of, for those of you who are here, of course, as someone else said, there's a, a lot of things going on, so some people aren't able to make it here. Um, so, so to start off, um, I've got Ben Nguyen. Is Ben here? No? <laughs> got Ashley Park. <laughs> Winnie Luong. Jasmine Kwan, and Jasmine, I should, I need to take a little bit of extra time here. I've, I've been here since 2017, so I, I've been a part of GREAT since then, I've been directing it, um, but Jasmine has been with us since 2018, right? So she's been a part of GREAT basically as long as I have, so, so extra thanks. And in the last year, she's really taken on a leadership effort and has guided it through some really difficult times, so Jasmine deserves extra applause. Um, and then the last one would be uh, Dana, Afonso. Oh. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you. Next, we would like to recognize our students from Public Health Association. A little bit about Public Health Association, also known as PHA. It is an organization dedicated to promoting public health through education, service, advocacy, and social engagement. 
Some of their big accomplishments in 2022 include hosting their sixth annual public health summit with a historic turnout of speakers and 200 plus attendees worldwide and hosting their second annual Meet the Faculty event where students can actually network with faculty and staff within the public health. Let's go ahead and recognize our graduating executive board members. And as I call you, please join me on the stage. Trisha Sabarian, co-president of 2021 and 2022. Alice Chong, co-president as well, 2021, 2022. Faraz Fardi, co-president 2020 to 2021. Sonia Manju, events chair. Anthony Shirez, events chair. Erica Shanoi, Administrative Chair. Isabel Devera, Advocacy Chair. Let's give them a round of applause for all of their hard work throughout these last few years. Thank you. All right, next, let's go ahead and welcome back Arturo Razo. All right, all right, so many awards, right? So next up, I would like to go ahead and recognize our student employees we have for the past year. These students helped us support our office with academic advising to all students in different stages of their life. Without their help, all of the academic advisors in our office will be in meetings and answering emails 24 seven. So please help me welcome them to the stage. Can I have Kayla Alarcon on the stage? <laughs> Can I have Lindsay Kung to the stage? And then space, special recognition, they were not able to make it, Kimberly Alvarez. So let's give one quick last clap. Yeah, thank you so much. Yay. All right, thank you, thank you. I would like to now welcome back Rocio Gonzalez. Thank you. So our, for our next award, we are going to be providing the Outstanding Undergraduate Practicum Site Award. As part of our degree requirements, all of our students must complete a 100-hour internship from an approved community site where they will work along site supervisors, other organization and team members, and gain hands-on experience in a field experience within practicum, or within public health. <laughs> We work with a large number of outstanding organizations, some of whom go above and beyond to provide our students with the invaluable experience that assists in the development of their careers. This year has been unprecedented in the transition from going from remote back to in-person, remote back to in-person. It's been quite a journey for our students. And they have been an extraordinary mentor and support in guiding our students throughout this time. We would now like to honor this site for going above and beyond mentorship, support, dedication, time and effort with our students and provide the 2020 Outstanding Undergraduate and Site of the Year Award to Dr. Melissa Mandala from Dr. Lifestyles Clinic. Please welcome Dr. Melissa Mandala to the stage. Hello everyone, I am absolutely thrilled for this award. I know that this year, as she mentioned, has been very, very challenging, but also it's built resilience in a lot of my students. I absolutely love mentoring and really do that, showing up for not only my patients, but all the students. And I would love to just speak upon their behalf because they've really been the, ha the hands and feet, but also the heart 
and the minds to really connect with our patients. Um, at Dr. Lifestyle Clinic, it's really unique. We speak about nutrition, exercise, sleep, and also re reduction of tobacco and other substances, and mental health and gut health. And it's really to prevent disease because 80% of our diseases are related to lifestyle medicine. And we focus on preventive health as well. Um, my husband, who can't be here. He's also a big part of um, the clinic and this award. He was also a supportive um, doctor when it comes to autoimmune health and integrative health. So the students have been so um, participant, but also um, dedicated in really getting the EMR up and running for our clinic. They've also been able to participate in the ribbon cutting for our inaugural introduction to Newport Beach in really the hub of people coming all over California, around the nation, and, and even getting telemedicine to other countries. So it's been an honor for them to develop public health um, educational handouts and guides and really have them see what they can do in the future, either be in public policy, public health, entrepreneurship, medicine, and beyond. So thank you. This award is really for you, too. Thank you. And thank you so much, Dr. Mandala. And now we will be welcoming Meredith Kwok, Director of Alumni Relations, to the stage. Good morning, everyone. As Rocio said, I'm the Director of Alumni Relations for the college. Um, but as I said yesterday, I've been with public health for five years. So this is my home, and these are my favorite people. Um, so anyway. There's so much on your mind right now. I know you just have to get through the next few days and then figure out what comes next. But I have good news. There is a lot that comes next. Um, after commencement on Monday, you will be welcomed warmly into the Anteater alumni family. And what does that mean? Our alumni community is tight knit. It is a bond that lasts a lifetime. We have so many opportunities for all of you to stay engaged with UCI and with each other. We have a chapter with a, a board of alumni volunteers and leaders. We have a few of them here today. Our president, Kalani Phillips, came out just for this to say hello to you. And our vice president, Megan Padilla. We have alumni that are on our staff. So like I said, tight knit family. We have networking opportunities to get to know each other in this community. We have a newsletter and social media. I encourage you to stay connected. We're also starting a mentorship program in the fall. So we invite you to be a mentor and give back to a student that walked in your shoes that you're still wearing until Monday. Or also as a first year graduate, you're welcome to join us as a mentee and get some mentorship from one of our other alum. So with that, we want to make sure that you're tuned in. So take out your phones. I know this doesn't happen much at school. But we have a brand new Instagram. It's UCI Public Health Alumni. Give us a follow and raise your hand or your phone. And we have a special gift that Kalani is going to help me pass out from our alumni to you to welcome you to the family. So give us a follow. We got one. <laughs> We got two. All right. <laughs> so as you're following, um, you're going to need to know how to do this on Monday. And I don't want you to embarrass yourself in front of all your colleagues. You're going to have to have a strong zot. So if you don't know by now how to zot, it's five fingers up. The two in the middle touch your thumb. That's a wolf. Cute. Pull your thumb back. And you have our darling Peter the Anteater. And his battle cry is zot, zot, zot. So can we practice on three zot, zot, zot? One, two, three. Mm, I would try one more time. OK, deep breath. One, two, three. Much better. Faculty over there, very strong. So thank you on behalf of our alumni community. We look forward to getting to know you. Um, mentorship starts in the fall. And we'd ask at the end of this event everybody to take a, hat, a picture with their hat on for our new Instagram that you're following. And with that, I turn it over to Miguel. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you, Meredith. Now we're near the end. 
I'd like to welcome back Dr. Ted Gideons to the stage for our closing remarks. Uh, I, those of you who took practicum this quarter, this may, some of this may sound familiar from the last um, class, but uh, I, I get, I'm, thank you for being here, um, and I really want to shout out to Student Affairs who have been working their butts off on this and other stuff constantly, so please give them a round of applause. Um, they work so hard and do so much. Uh, it is, I, I honestly don't know how they get it all done. Um, uh, and I want to thank all of you for being here um, and to congratulate you on doing all these things. Um, all of you, if the parents aren't here, um, if this is new, every single one of our graduates has to go through me um, because I teach practicum. Um, and I've taught it uh, 19 out of the past 20 quarters. Um, that includes the summer. Um, and it is a, uh, it's a huge amount of work for them and for me. It's a huge honor. It's a huge responsibility. But it also has been able to keep me sane. Um, I have started here in 2016. Um, now the world was not awesome before 2016, but it has been a really trying um, six years. Um, and it is very easy for many people, as we all know, to despair about many things. Um, one of the ways that, um, mostly because when things are bad, and you have no control, it's really easy to get depressed. This is you know, classic social psychology stuff. If you do have control, it's a lot better. And one of the things I get to do is uh, I get to have a, a small bout of control about making the world a better place because I get to work with all of you and your classmates as they go through the process of becoming, go, entering the community to help fix it. So it is this amazing thing that I have, we have these eager, earnest, bright, energetic students that are actually planning to save the world, or at least some small bit of it, and it has created, I mean, this is, so I have a little modicum of, of self-efficacy, um, and it really makes me feel great to know that we are putting you all out there. And, and because I've presided over practicum for so long, I actually know how good you all are. Um, by the end of that class, you actually really know what you're doing. I don't have, I am thrilled that we are putting you out there. Um, and I'm thrilled for you that you have finished this, thrilled for us that we, we get to have you as our graduates, but also that we know that things, the world is gonna be a better place because of what you have done. So I wanna thank you uh, on behalf of the world um, and um, thank you for being here, thank you for being amazing students um, and congratulations, uh, it has been a wild several years for just for you um, and the fact that you did what you have done over the last several years is incredibly impressive so congratulations again and thank you and uh, I give yourselves a round of applause um, please make sure to stay in contact um, with the alumni um, because I would love to have y'all come back and talk to the students um, and tell them how to do things better. Um, and so this is officially concludes the ceremony. Congratulations again. And uh, I will see you uh, as long as you're walking. I will see you on Monday too.